Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to talk about why your scroll wheel stops working in a text box if that text box is a rich text box. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look. Today's question comes from Miles in Palo Alto, California, one of my platinum members. Miles says, I watched your video on using the mouse scroll wheel in a continuous form or in continuous forms, and it works great with the regular text box in the footer. But when I switched that text box to rich text, the scroll wheel stopped working. Is there a way to fix that so I could still scroll through my notes? Well, yes, that is a little quirk with access. The trick that I showed in the previous video works fine if you got normal text, but if you switch it to rich text, it stops working. I'm going to show you how to fix that, how to get around it, not fix it. But first, this is a developer level video. What does that mean? Well, that means if you haven't done any VBA before, go start here. This is about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started programming in VBA. Today's VBA is not too complicated, but we do need to know some stuff. Some stuff that you should learn first, obviously go watch my original video, uh, the scroll wheel and continuous forms video. Specifically in part two, I show you the trick that I'm going to do first today. Um, and then we're gonna see how to fix that trick. Now I'm not a huge fan of send keys, especially if you're trying to automate stuff, but send keys is what we're gonna use to fix this problem today. So go watch this so you know what send keys is. It's, it's one of those uh, good enough sometimes functions where it's, it's not the best, but sometimes it'll get you out of a tight jam. Some other stuff you'll need, of course, you'll need to know how to use if then statements. We're going to use screen.active control. And optionally, I might throw in a for next loop in there too. So we might get to that. Uh, these are all free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch all of these and then come on back. Okay, so as a brief recap, the problem we have is we have a continuous form. The scroll wheel works fine, right? If we throw a notes field down here, because we have a notes field for our customers, go to form design, uh, add existing fields, find the notes field where I get notes right there, drag, drop, and put it right here. Get rid of that label. All right, so these are the notes for the customer. Save. Now, since they're in the form footer, the notes you see here are the notes for the customer that you're on up top. I love doing this, right? But if you click down here and scroll, notice it does scroll the box, but it's also scrolling the form. Okay, so the simple trick that we talked about in part two of the scroll wheel and continuous forms is to simply turn off the forms scroll bar when this guy gets the focus and then turn it back on again when you leave the focus. Very easy, two lines of code, right? Open up the properties. Go to events for this box on got focus is right there, right? And in here we say me dot scroll bars equals zero. Me is the form, right? So turn the scroll bars off or none, right? And then in the lost focus event, where's lost focus? There it is. We're gonna say me dot scroll bars equals two, which is vertical only. Yeah, there's access constants for that, VB scroll bar something something. You can look it up, but I just use the numbers. And I think one is horizontal only. Uh, and yeah, I think one of those is, is both. But anyways, regardless of that, now this, save it, right? Come back out here, close it, open it. Now, if I'm up here, I got a scroll bar. If I click down here, it turns off the form scroll bar and now I can continue to scroll inside the box, right? That's a solution from the previous video. But now, if I turn that into rich text, first we'll do it in the table, right? Design view, always do it in the table first. You wanna make sure your table is also set to rich text, otherwise you might get some weird formatting. All right, so set, set, set that to rich text here for the notes field, save it. Then come back to your list form, and you gotta do it in any other form you might have it as well, otherwise you'll see weird characters, you'll see HTML characters. Open up this guy, go to data. Yeah, you'd think it'd be under format, but it's under data. Set that to rich text save it and now you can come in here and do fancy stuff like select text you get this thing you can set it to red and bold and, and whatever okay but notice look i'm scrolling with the wheel and nothing's happening and you can't see it it's off camera but trust me my fingers are rolling up and down on the button 
Right? Here's a visual. I'm rolling up and down on the button. I'm doing the thing, but it's not working. All right? If I come back up here and click, yeah, this still works. Ignore the beeping. I don't know why it beeps. Every now and then it beeps when I use the scroll wheel. But if I click in here, no bueno. So how do we fix this? Well, this is a case where it's just a quirk with how access behaves. And the way we're going to fix it is by simulating send keys with up and down arrows. If you if you hit the keyboard, right? If I'm hitting the keyboard right now, up, down, see, it scrolls. So that's what we're going to simulate with code. There's no other easy way to do this. Yes, there's Windows API calls and all kinds of crazy stuff you can do to, to get around this. But this is a nice, simple, like three line solution that'll work, okay? I'm all about easy solutions. Now leave the got focus code that we put in there before because you still want to disable that behavior when you click on and off the box. All right, but in here, what we want to do is we want to say, okay, if the focus is on the notes field, then we're going to send keys up and down arrows. Okay, now where do we put that code? Well, we're gonna look for the form properties. We're gonna go to events. We're gonna find the mouse wheel event. Bet you didn't know there was an on mouse wheel event, right? Go into here, Boop. All right, now we get bival page as Boolean and count as long. Don't worry about page for the purposes of this video, but the count is what we care about. Now count is either gonna be negative or positive, right? It's negative if you're scrolling up and positive if you're scrolling down with the wheel, right? That gets sent into this function. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first check to see if the user is on the notes field. And we do that with screen.activeControl. So if screen.activeControl.name, if the name of the active control is notes in my case, that's the name of the text box, then do something, okay? Now in here, we're gonna say if, count is less than zero, then send keys, the up arrow. The up arrow looks like this. It's curly brace, up, close curly brace, close your quotes. Otherwise, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna send keys down, okay? So the mouse wheel's fired. Check to see if we're on the notes field. If the count is less than zero, send keys up, Otherwise, send keys down. It's that simple. Okay, save it. Debug compile once in a while. All right, close it, close it, open it. Ready? Clicking up here, scrolling up and down here. It's not sending the keys because we're not in the notes field. But now if I click down here, look at that. Oh, it's sending keys. Ah, look at that. And you don't need any error handling at all because send keys, the down arrow can't by itself just go beyond the bounds. So you don't got to worry about going too far up or too far down. Same, nice and easy, all right? Not a bad solution. Click back up here, all that code takes back over again. I wish I knew how to turn that beep off, but I don't. If anyone knows how to turn that beep off, let me know, post in the comments. Now the one other thing, and I did this in my database, I tweaked it, if you got a big text box, Right, sometimes I have a very large text box and a very small scrollable area. So if it's like this, right? When you come in here and you click, well, that's a very short one, but let me uh, let me pick someone's got, okay, here's a long one, right? You click and it could take a while to get down to the bottom. See, and then you go back up, 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 up. So you might wanna make it so that for each one of those, it send keys more than one up or down. Okay, and you can do that with a for loop. So we come in here, and we'll say dim x as along. And inside here, we'll just say for x equals one, two, however many you wanna do, three, four, five, right, whatever. And then put that whole thing inside of a loop. So now each time that fires, it's gonna go three spaces up or three spaces down. You just gotta make it for whatever size your box is, whatever you're comfortable with, right? And now if I do it, right click now it goes three at a time so it's much much more of a you know a larger scrolling there see okay and yeah there's a million other things you can do there's a lot of different ways to solve this this is nice it's simple it's an easy solution you can play tricks with the cell start you can there, like i said there's windows api calls you can use but that this works i'm all about nice easy solutions so that's it. That's your tech help video for today. Post in the comments. Let me know what you thought. I love hearing your feedback. And if you've got a better way to do this, 
Let me know. In fact, that solution last time, part two, uh, that was a, a user recommendation. I'm like, wow, that's that's amazing. I love it when you guys teach me stuff. That's really cool. Oh, wait. Oh, someone's beaming in. Great. Now I got a transporter pad full of tribbles I got to deal with. But that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.